Hey, hey everyone, Katie Kimball here for the Healthy Parenting Connector. And I don't know about you, what your school schedule is doing, but next week we have spring break and we weren't gonna go anywhere. And now we're looking at the weather here in Michigan. It's like gonna top out at like 40, maybe 50. We're gonna have rain. It's gonna be in the 30s. I That is not spring to me. And I'm just so tired of waking up and having it be dark still after daily savings time. That's whatever for the end of the day, but it's horrible for getting out of bed. So I think we're going to impromptu head to Florida. And so my mind is already churning on what I want frozen, what I want prepared, what I'm going to fill the cooler with, because you know what? I don't see any reason to feel yucky on vacation because of what we're eating. I don't see any reason why I have to leave all of my real food ideals at home just because I'm traveling. Now, I know that means that it will be less vacation-y, right? I will have to be doing some preparation of food. However, I will definitely take, you know, my easiest meals. And, and we'll have a time or two that we will eat out and we'll have a treat and we'll have fun with it. And I'll try to make good choices at that restaurant. But for, for us, for so many reasons that I'll get into in just a minute, we generally choose to cook for ourselves no matter where we are, we are, no matter what we're doing. And in fact, a couple of years ago in 2019, we traveled for six weeks straight. This was not an RV trip. This was the six Kimballs in their minivan moving locations every two to five days. And we did a combination of staying with friends and family, couple hotels, mostly Airbnbs, again, because we like to cook. So you kind of need a kitchen and that's well worth it. My math says that was 126 meals, not counting snacks, and we only ate out 15 times, 15 times total in six weeks. That means, you know, just about 90% of the time we were cooking for ourselves and, and we were making choices that we appreciated and that our bodies appreciated. So for example, if we were going out hiking or going to be out for the day, you know, traveling in an aquarium or whatever, we would prep simple stuff like cut vegetables, carrots, cucumbers, you know, a dip you can buy pretty well, you know, clean ingredient guacamole is just about anywhere. We had nut butter and apples that we pre-cut, you know, fruit cups in juice, not sugar, string cheese, yogurt, etc. This did not take very long to pack up and and it kept us, you know, kept us feeling good and feeling healthy and well nourished. Now, that doesn't mean that we never ate out, right? But when we did, it was generally because we wanted to, right? We wanted our kids to have the horrible powdered sugar fest of beignets in New Orleans. We made that choice. Um, again, in New Orleans, we spent the whole day downtown and we wanted to stop at a traditional restaurant and order six or seven appetizers and have everyone share them so we could you know, experience the local fare. And that was for us, you know, that was really, really fun. And that's what we wanted to do. So most of the time, most of the time when we did eat out, it was a pretty intentional choice and not oh no, you know, we don't have any other options. Um, even in a hotel room, and this was, by the way, we had to leave New Orleans halfway through our planned week because a hurricane was coming. So we did have about three or four days in a hotel that we did not anticipate. And it was a Drury, and at a Drury, you get free breakfast and free dinner. So we were like, how can you not have the dinner? But we had a meal that we had already, you know, had planned and had things purchased and thought for. So, you know, here I am cooking an entire meal in a hotel room on the little desk. We had a tiny cutting board with us, um, just doing <laughs> doing the whole thing. We even made homemade mayonnaise while on vacation because we were in an area where we couldn't find um, a, like a high quality grocery store with mayonnaise that didn't use unnatural or industrial oils. And so like knowledge is power, like knowing how to make food, knowing how to make things from scratch allows you to do a lot. And of course, you know, of course, we had our kids involved. There's John and Gabe making some spaghetti at an Airbnb in Alabama and their brother Paul cutting the zucchini that I was adding to that spaghetti sauce. Incredibly, incredibly tiny because he didn't, you know, he didn't think he was a fan. <laughs> I didn't, didn't want to taste the zucchini. Um, you know, so our kids, our kids got into it. Our kids helped. And one, one thing that I think is really key to parenting is that we are writing, we are determining what our kids feel as normal, right? Whether they value what we value or not, 
now as children, whether they value what we value when they become young adults and begin making more of their own choices or not, that's up to them to decide. But their habits, their core, their roots are determined by what we do, right, parents? It's determined by what we do. And so if I want my kids to value real food, I will take real food with me on vacation and show them that we believe it's important. If I want my kids to value, you know, living on a budget and making wise financial choices, being good stewards of the finances that we've been given, then they're going to see us saving money by making our own food on vacation, right? We do the same thing with our faith. Every time we travel, even if we have to drive 45 minutes one direction, which we've done multiple times, we go to mass. We're Catholic. We go to mass on Saturday night or Sunday morning. We don't miss it. It doesn't matter where we are. And, and that is building our kids' values. That's building their foundation. And that's building what they see as normal. So even if they stray, I always hope, I hope that someday they come back to that normal because they realize that that they feel better and you know they do better. Um, I have a whole post and I forgot to link to it in the description here, but we'll make sure you can find the link to our post. We have a whole post about the food that we take when we go to Disney World. Um, we, again, budget, right? So we go like one day every three years. <laughs> so that each Kimball kid gets a little opportunity to go to Disney World. And people are always saying, you can't take food into Disney World. Oh, really? You sure can. We use a, a reusable bag that can get wet and can dry and can roll up into a tiny little ball when we're done. And when we pack a really simple lunch, we put ice into a quart bag so that it melts. And there we, we get like nice cold water to add to our water bottles midday. And when it's gone, it's it's gone. Everything is disposable. So we're not carrying around anything but that little just, um, reusable bag by the end of the day. So <laughs> this is not pretty. But this is an example of the last time we went to Disney World. It was like four years ago. You know, we've got a kid eating blueberries and yogurt on the lid of the yogurt container because we don't want to pack bowls. We've got hard boiled eggs and our tiny real salt shakers, frozen peas, cheese sticks. And I'm sure there were probably three or four other choices for lunch because that's just, you know, that's just how I roll is everybody gets choices. But the point is, is we saved a ton of money, right? When we go to a theme park, whether it's Disney World or the zoo for a whole day, we are going to either eat one meal or less, right? I love to pack enough of my own food that we can cobble together like at least a meal and a half and then maybe like splurge and buy some fries, you know, or some ice cream or like something fun that we don't always have at home. And and again, for us, that's, that's setting the theme for our kids. Um, when we do travel to Florida, we always stay in some sort of European bee or a condo. And the first day there, we go to the store and I have my lists already made. This was our cart. The last time our family of six went to Florida, this was one of two stores we went to. Um, and we, you know, I had all the meals planned. We knew exactly what we needed. Yes, I'm going to spend a little bit more at the grocery store to stock our fridge and freezer than I would at home because I can't shop sales. I can't shop in bulk. And I'm going to buy some easier, clean ingredient convenience foods, you know. But the point is, we still, even though we're spending more on groceries than we often would at home, we're still saving a ton, a ton of money. Um, and because my kids feel like this is normal, it's part of vacation to just cook. Last time we were in Florida, my daughter took it upon herself to make most breakfast and she just enjoyed it. She liked having the fancy plates. I think this is a lunch with just yogurt and fresh fruit and fresh vegetables, cheese, blue thin, you know, was it nut thin crackers and some gluten-free um, tortillas with, with clean ingredient lunch meat. Like that was not hard to put together. <laughs> Leah was so proud of each and every one of her breakfast. She had so much fun, you know, playing with pancake mixes and again, kind of clean ingredient bacon and fresh fruit. Um, this is a, a chicken and rice with veggies on the side. Like we ate like kings and we had enough to invite my parents over quite often um, to hang with us. But again, like who takes pictures of their food? Well, actually a lot of people do now. But I did because Leah had such a big smile and she was so proud of what she had done. Um, and again, this is like this is the same quality of food that we would eat 
at home, but because we're on vacation, we had more time to lean into it and to enjoy and to play around with recipes. Um, Leah just did such an amazing, such an amazing job. Look at, she's just cooking up a storm um, in the condo. So I guess that's my encouragement to you is when you travel, plan ahead, think about you know, what your real food values are and how can you make that happen even when you're on vacation. Now, if you're someone who absolutely positively feels that cooking while on vacation wrecks the vacation, that like wrecks the feel for you, if that increases your stress, well, then you probably should, you know, maybe look for healthier ways to eat out at restaurants, right? Or ways to um, buy like kind of healthy convenience foods at a grocery store to save on your budget. By the way, if you would be interested in a post or an additional video or podcast on how to make healthier choices at a restaurant and how to choose restaurants where you can um, stick to your real food values a little better, I'd be super curious to hear that. Dash me an email, you know, comment below this video. Let me know if that's something that would be helpful to you. Again, for me, I, I don't mind well, sometimes I do mind. Sometimes it does stress me out. But most of the time, because it's so important to me to save on the budget and to make sure that my family is well nourished, um, I don't mind cooking. It's just, it really is just normal. And this would not have been normal 15 years ago, but it's absolutely become our normal now. So I want to leave you with three tips for sticking to your healthy eating and healthy living while on vacation. Okay. First, is to plan ahead, right? Is to plan about how you can cook for yourselves, whether that means having an Airbnb or a condo with a kitchenette, or whether it means checking out my post on how to cook in a hotel room with an instant pot, which I've totally done multiple times, okay? Um, think about plan ahead as well and just buying or packing some nourishing snacks, right? If you're stuck eating out sometimes, sometimes that like picnic lunch in the car where you've got some Paleo Valley meat sticks, some organic cheese sticks, some well, you know, clean ingredient, well sourced crackers or whatever. And just having sort of that picnic lunch feel where nobody actually had to prepare anything, but you're still eating whole foods and you're not breaking the budget by eating out. That's a, you know, another, another way. So I encourage you to plan ahead and think about how you can take your real food with you on vacation. Now, I also encourage you to be really intentional when you're not sticking to your real food ideals, right? So this is number two, is if you're going to be off your routine, whether that's um, the, like the time routine of when and how often you eat, whether that's the routine of the contents of the meal, you know, what you eat, that you're eating out and you're probably having fewer vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. If you're going to be off your routine, then get off your routine. Make it intentional, make the choice, make the decision and talk about it with your kids. Because anytime that you're outside of what you have set up to be important to your family, this gives your kids an opportunity to understand why you do what you do when you're at home, right? So when you're on vacation, if you're eating fewer vegetables and more sugar and more junk food, then you invite your children and yourself and other adults with you to pay attention to how you feel. How much energy do you have? How quickly are you getting hungry again? How maybe heavy do you feel in your belly after you leave a restaurant? Do you have any more headaches or stomach aches or fewer headaches or stomach aches, right? I mean, we don't want to lead the witness, but if we can take that, you know, out of routine eating as an opportunity to build mindfulness and to learn about how our bodies react to different styles of foods or to different routines, that's great. Um, we talk a lot in our picky eating membership about these routines, about separating meals and snacks, about leading with vegetables. There's all these little routines um, and parents get very worried. They say, oh, Katie, but we're going on vacation. We're going to lose all our routines. I'm going to lose all my progress. And I don't want to do that. I'm so frustrated. I say, no, you just point out that you're outside of your routine. You say, kids, we're on vacation. We have these rules at home. We have these routines at home and they're very important. But you know what? For vacation, we're mostly going to ignore them on purpose, right? Not only does this increase the fun factor for the kids, but it demarcates. It says, this is home. This is routine. That's still happening. And this is vacation. And it's not happening. And pay attention, right? Pay attention to how you feel because it's a great opportunity to say, you know, guys, we're all getting a little hangry here. We're really struggling. I've noticed that, um, you know, people are having trouble controlling their big emotions. And, you know, Johnny has a headache and Susie has a stomach ache or whatever. 
and then this is why this is why we eat how we eat at home. And so sometimes we have a little too much fun, don't we? Right. And that way that's planting that seed in your kid's head. Oh, we it is important that we eat how we eat. And we can break that routine sometimes. Obviously not if there's allergies or food sensitivities, you know, or like genuine reasons to to stick to a very strict diet. But but it's it's good to be out of that routine to feel how it's different, to remind ourselves why our routine is important and to articulate to our kids that that routine is still there when you get back home. You do not have to lose your progress and it will just take a day or two to get back into the normal routine after you're home, just like it does for sleep, you know, and focus and going back to school and waking up early in the morning and all that stuff. So number one is plan ahead. Think about how you can bring your real food with you. Number two is to change your mindset and the way you think and really pay attention and be mindful when you don't. Just if you're not going to stick to your routine, don't do it. And that brings me to number three, which is don't stress about it. Okay. Make an intentional decision. I am going to take my real food on vacation or I'm going to leave my real food behind me or I'm going to do a hybrid of both, but own it own your decision and make sure that no matter what is happening, that you don't allow stress to have those negative health effects that you're trying to avoid when you eat real food anyway, right? If you're going to have fun, man, lean into it and just have fun. We don't need to worry or be anxious and stress about it because it's a decision that we made, right? Does that make sense? And if you're choosing to take that real food, try hard not to worry or be anxious or stress about getting it all done or sticking to perfection, right? Just plan ahead and make it, make it work. Again, we are so very much setting our kids normal and, and you may find, you know, some new family traditions that are really, really fun. This was probably, this was probably five years ago. We were in Florida at this nice complex. We're at the pool on the first day and my kids see all these people walk by with these smoothies about, I don't know, less than a pint, probably a 12 ouncer. I would guess the smoothies. Oh, mom, can we have a smoothie? I go, look, you guys, these smoothies were like eight or nine dollars for one. I said, okay, family, um, we'll get one and we'll we'll go get some little cups from the room and we'll share it. Okay. I mean, this was like, this wasn't really a smoothie. It was more of a milkshake with fruit, <laughs> right? It was like ice cream, you know, soft serve ice cream, nothing healthy about it, except a little, a little fruit thrown in to make people feel like they're having a smoothie. It's really a milkshake with fruit. Okay. So you got to understand that. Um, very expensive. And we shared it around and about half of our family honestly thought it was too sweet and wouldn't have wanted any more than their portion of, you know, that 12 ounce or whatever it was. And I said, you know what, Dan and I are doing our big shopping trip this afternoon or whatever. We were going back to the store for something. I said, I'm going to see if we can make something better at back at home, not home, but like in the, in the condo because we knew, I knew there was a blender there. So I bought a couple kinds of frozen fruit. I bought vanilla yogurt or maybe plain yogurt and vanilla ice cream. So we could do, we could do the milkshake with some fruit in it, or we could do a healthy smoothie, right? We, we did both. And so we were able to, for about the same cost, and we worked this out, you know, I made my kids do the math. It was about the same cost for our whole family to get one little smoothie down at the pool or to make three rounds of huge, like 16 ounce smoothies per person. And we spent about the same amount of money. My kids loved it. Uh, This picture shows the, I think it's the fruit smoothie with a little scoop of ice cream on top, right? And then we would, we would take them, oh dear, something weird happened. We would, we would take those down to the pool, right? In the plastic cups from the condo. And I tell you what, as much as my kids' eyes were drawn by everyone walking by with the smoothies from the, the purchased smoothies, when we would walk in with these smoothies, all these people would look up from their, you know, their chairs and go, oh my gosh, what do you have? What is that? That looks so good. And I'm like, no, oh, homemade smoothie, you know. Anytime we go back to that location, which we do about every three years, the kids are like, are we going to have smoothies this time? Remember the smoothies last time? Those were so good, right? It is. It became a tradition after just one time because we made it fun. We showed the kids how much we saved on the budget. They tasted way better than the chemical ridden, highly like high fructose corn syrup smoothie version that we had purchased at the pool. And so for me, that is laying the foundation. That is laying my kids new normal and it's infusing my values of good stewardship of our budget 
and good stewardship of our health into something fun like vacation, right? We put the ice cream in there because that's fun and it's okay and our bodies can handle a little bit of that. But it was so, so much better, three times better, four times better than what we could purchase at the pool. I hope those tips are helpful about how to plan ahead, how to be mindful and how to not stress and just have fun while sticking with some real food and healthy living values on vacation. I'm Katie Kimball from Kids Cook Real Food. We get our kids involved in the kitchen and here at the Healthy Parenting Connector, every week we help you lay the foundation to raise healthy, independent adults who know what they are doing. I will see you next week.